bookworms? It's your old pal, Mike! Hey, what's going on? Oh, are the bookworms here? Hey, bookworms! It's your old pal, Book Pop! I already said that part! Uh, but that's, that's my, that's my part. Hmm. Get here earlier next time. Oh, he's got jokes. He's got jokes. All right. Uh, well, welcome back to the Brooklyn Bodega. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> Since we're on the subject, do you enjoy a good scare? Mm, no. Well, why not? Because I've never really been scared. What? Yeah, um, BP, I am super, super, super tough. When you're super tough like me, you can't be scared. Okay. Well... Today, we have a story we know you bookworms are really going to enjoy. But it is a little scary. I think of it as more of a good exercise in poetry. Uh, it's told in a very gothic style. I don't know if you guys know Edgar Allan Poe, but it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, the Raven? What is he talking about? Let's join Michael McMichael as he takes us along on a fearful ride that we won't soon forget. Should I do the honors? Yeah. I love it when you call me book pop, but go run and grab your hard copies if you got one. The Frightful Ride of Michael with Michael Written by Bonnie Becker Illustrated by Mark Beery T'was the 13th of November, a stormy night, when the 13th bus hove into sight. Something about it didn't seem right, but Michael McMichael boarded. Welcome, welcome, the driver grinned. Beckoning Michael McMichael in. His teeth were long and white as sin. His nose bent and warted. The bus was full, barely room inside. Perhaps he should wait for a different ride? But he was late and well, besides. It was Grand's dear pet he transported. So the bus slipped off on its late night route. And Michael helped old ladies out. And in general, was a lad most stout. As the riders steadily deboarded. Soon there were five, then two, then one. Till Michael McMichael was all alone. With a driver's face who was thin as bone. And more and more distorted. When the bus was empty, no others in sight. The driver hissed with soft delight. Doesn't the cold give an appetite for body parts assorted? The boy, it seems, hadn't noticed before. The jaw-like opening of the door. The tongue-like glisten of the floor. The teeth-like seats it supported. Really? You should stop right here. My grandmother's house is nearly near. I bring her something very dear. He held up the basket he sported. But you haven't paid, the driver moaned. I'm sorry to say you can't go home. Till you've paid the fare with meat or bone, our coffers will not be shorty. Curling his mouth in a dreadful sneer, he grabbed Mick Michael by the ear and, twisting it, began to veer toward a slathering maw most horrid. Now, Michael was a peaceable boy. Kindness and cheer, his greatest joys. But the moment called for a desperate ploy into this, the lad resorted. Good sir, he cried. Why the haste? 
Should grand sweet thing go to waste? Wouldn't you like just a little taste? Your service should be rewarded. McMichael lifted the basket lid. In that darkness, something hid. But the greedy driver did his bid. His tongue uncoiled black and contorted. And thus, he met her terrible fate. For his head and arms and legs were eight. His shoes waved goodbye. So sad, too late. He was gone, moved on, exported. Twas the 13th of November, a stormy night, when the 13 bus lurched off in fright, and Michael McMichael strolled out of sight. But so, it's been reported. <laughs> the end? <laughs> what, a, what a great, what spooky story that was. So, uh, Mike, do you think you could tell me and the bookworms at home what the message of today's story was? Mike? Mike? Mike. Ah! Calm down. <laughs> ah! All right. Okay. I'm scared, BB. Okay. All right. You shocked me a little bit, but we're okay. You're okay. You're. Okay. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Let's see. The message. The message. <sighs> Always take the train. I'm pretty sure that that's not it. Oh, I know. Sometimes picnic baskets have monsters in them. <laughs> what? No, please, one more time. Hmm. Being greedy can get you into big, big trouble. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a funky fresh answer. So, until next time. Would you do the honors? Sure. When you're bored sick, a book's a good doctor. Come and find the cure with Mike and Book Papa.